prayer to her siblings, her family. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. And for years this prayer was prayed and sometimes one or others of these children would hear that prayer and when they would hear that prayer, some would fall asleep in another room. And this very mother, this loving mother, would perhaps kiss one or two or three or all of them on the forehead and say, good night, babies, I'll see you in the morning. And she would take them to another room. And right now, today, 97 years later, we say to her, good night, mama, we'll see you in the morning. Pastor Ricky Rush, pastor here of the Inspiring Body of Christ Church, and on behalf of Sister Rush, leaders of our church and this entire ministry, we want to thank the Evergreen Funeral Home, Brother Clifton Maxwell, for always being so attentive to all of our needs and our concerns and to this family in their moment of grief. There are two ways, there are two ways that you celebrate a person crosses a finish line. You celebrate that they lost by encouraging them. Or you celebrate that they win by encouraging them and the family members around them. 97 years, that's a, that's a marathon. That's not a sprint, by the way. And I don't care what anybody says. There are some believers in this room. It's easy and great to do a funeral when you have a room full of Christians, a room full of believers, a room full of people who have been steadfast, a room full of people who have gone through ups and downs, a room full of people who know what it is to have to say, I quit, but then God said, not now. It's easy to do a funeral when somebody that we knew of is now sitting at the throne of God, watching us, waiting on us to make our return. So at this time, I know you've been standing for quite a while, but can we just one more time celebrate this winner? She crossed the finish line. And I think it's all right to stand and just give Sister Glenn, Elsa Glenn, standing ovation. Glory to God. Thank you so much, everybody. Now turn to the person next to you and just say, hey, you know, because funerals bring out people that we don't know, people we haven't seen, people we, 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 we didn't know they were still living. And we're grateful to God that we're among the land of the living now and to all the members of our various churches and clergy of our community. Uh, some of you did not have a chance to know Sister Glenn, Elsie Glenn, but you knew 
of her wonderful daughters. Um, you knew of her children or grandchildren. Uh, you may have known her from a few Facebook or social media posts. Um, so we found out who she was and we fell in love. I really, really started getting close to her when I found out she had a son by the name of Ricky Glenn. Uh huh. That's deeper than most of you would imagine. My name is Ricky, second name Glenn. Amen. I became fond of her and I realized that she had a baby and her baby was born on March the 9th, Parkland Hospital, sixth floor, right next to me. We were in labor and delivery together a long time ago. Amen. That doesn't say a whole lot to you, but I thought I'd put that in. If you're a person who normally don't smile, can I ask you today to please just let us use one set of your teeth in the front or something? Uh, I understand differences that people have, but this is the day the Lord has made, and we're just grateful. So we're going to smile and laugh, and if that bothers some of you, you can use mine. I will bring my smile personally to you. I'm grateful to have those in the clergy that are going to be sharing the pulpit area with us. Now, we, if you look on the program, there is a, it's not a mistake, it's just a rearrangement. I'll be officiating the funeral today because, you know, and, and what we're going to do is have a, a difference when it comes to our eulogy, the message of comfort. No, but no doubt about it, no doubt about it. I, I was her favorite pastor. Amen, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. But today to do her message is going to be her favorite preacher, her favorite nephew, her favorite apostle, her favorite comforter, her favorite prayer partner, and my friend. I've asked him so much from the heart to give us the honor of blessing her. Apostle Murray, thank you so much for being with us. Amen. So you got one title against a six-time champion. I hate I have to submit to it. But we are so grateful to have our churches together, our communities together. And, um, and if you need something or anything while you're here, we have some young ladies around and gentlemen that are in black dresses and the guys in black suits that are, assist you. We're going to move forward because everybody in the city of Dallas is on this program. And my job is to make sure that it goes as smooth and quick as possible. We're going to have our scriptures now. Um, those of you that have a program, you can use it. If you don't have a printed program, you can use your QR codes um, on your phones. If you just take where it says information, take a picture of the code on the side of your chair there as if you're going to take a picture. Now, if you push offering, you're going to give to the church. And I appreciate you pushing offering anytime you feel like it. But right now, if you push, uh, look at information as if you were going to take a picture of some of you that never used it before. And you'll see a little yellow square, touch that, and the program will be there. It'll be the same as this program. Everything will be on it, and it'll be there uh, forever. And you can share it with those that are not here. To those of you that are welcome, uh, joining us from wherever you are throughout the country, to those family members that we know of from Los Angeles, this is the Inspiring Body of Christ Church, and you are here at the funeral services for Mother Glenn, Elsie Glenn, um, loving mother, grandmother, great-grandmother, neighbor, and just a favorite sister, and just this a deep, deeply rich family. This time, we're going to go right now directly follow our program. You'll see where we have our scriptures and prayer, and then the choir will come with a brief selection, and then we'll, you're just going to keep moving forward. My job today is to keep it going as, as smooth and as quick as possible. If there are any mistakes or any things that anyone feels slighted, please let me know personally. Don't take it to the family. Just find your way up to me, all right? And I'll make sure that everybody gets exactly what we are hoping for. All right. Thank you. To the family, today I have a combination of two scriptures for your encouragement. Psalms 37 verses 39 and 40. But the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength. 
in the time of trouble. And the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because their trust is in him. The added scripture is Isaiah 41 and verse 10. God said, fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Reading to you Psalms 37, verses 39 and 40, Isaiah 41 and verse 10. Good morning. For the New Testament reading, Revelations 21, and the Bible says, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there were no more sea. And I, John, saw a holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And the fourth verse says, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and, the, and, shall, and there shall no more be death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he said, sit up on the throne and said, behold, I will make things new. And he said unto them, write, for these words are true and faithful. Amen. Good afternoon, family. Can you please bow your head while we pray? Lord, we thank you so much for your kindness and your goodness. We thank you so much for your mindfulness of us, Father. Our lives are but vapors of smoke, and yet you count every hair on our head. You collect every tear. You hear every thought and every prayer, and it is this God that we say thank you to. We thank you for guiding our steps. We thank you that we are here in our right minds and reasonable health to be able to even honor our grandmother, our mother, our sister, our friend, and we thank you so much for her life, Father. It was 97 years, and we know we're only promised 70. You gave her extra, Father, in Jesus' name. And we ask that that extra flows over to her family and friends, Father. Over 97 years, she knew you as a provider, Father. So we ask Jehovah Jireh be present. Father, she knew you to be present. So Jehovah Shema, would you be present today? Would you make your presence manifest in this place, God? Would you be the comforter that you call yourself to be, that we know that you are, God, in Jesus' name? There was not one day that you were not present until her dying breath she called your name and knew you as God may we know you as God father as she was raising children you made sure that they never lacked for anything may we also know this absence of lack God Thank you so much for your goodness to us, Father, for even in this, you are good. So good that even in death, there is life, Father. The souls and the hearts that we find in this room today, Father, may you touch them. May you be near, Father. May we know that you are with us. May you be Jehovah El Roy. May we know that you see us, Father. And may we be seen by you, and may we know that we are seen by you, God. 
We know that over 97 years, she knew you, but more importantly, God, you knew her. For you said in your word, many shall come to you in that last day, God, and say, didn't I? Didn't I pray? Didn't I preach? Didn't I prophesy? Didn't I cast out demons? Didn't I do miracles? And you said, you would say to them, depart from me, for I knew you not. But we know that Glenn Elsie Glenn, you knew. And may not only we know you as she knew you, but may you know us as you knew her. Right now, we turn our attention to the natural process of grief, Father, and say, we thank you. We thank you for grief. We thank you for mourning, Father. And we shall mourn, not like those without hope, but we shall mourn knowing that we shall see Glenn, Elsie Glenn, and each one of our family and friends again in heaven, God, in Jesus' name. So we come against any premature death. We come against any prolonged grief and any enemy that might attempt to use this grief as an open door to our souls, to our mind, wills, and emotion. In Jesus' name, we come against it with the blood of Jesus. And finally, Holy Spirit, do your work in us, Father. Do your work in us, Son. Do your work in us, Holy Spirit. Comfort us, teach us, and help us remember the good things and help us be strong even now. In this, Lord, we say you are good and your mercy endureth forever. And now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless, faultless to the only wise God. Glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever in Jesus' name. Amen. Glenn Elsie Glenn, she was born before there was social media. She was born before there was cable, before there was a salada, before there was Southern Market and all of that. She came during the era of syrup sandwiches mayonnaise sandwiches, washing clothes outside. Born before there was a such thing as a whole lot of indoor plumbing, she came through hard times and she was able to live in luxury. And I thank God, I keep thanking God for these daughters, the sons, the kinfolk. The lady who never owned a house but never lived outdoors. <laughs> I'm good. Our choir is going to come with a couple of selections and then we're going to move from the choir stand. Thank you. 
This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Today we celebrate the homegoing of my sister, Glenn Elsie Glenn. I am grateful to God that he has favored her with a long life, a blessed life. And we are certainly grateful and thankful. As I speak for the siblings, I am the 16th child of this family. And when I came along, many of the older ones were already married and living their lives. So I knew about them when they visited, but I didn't really know them. And it wasn't until Glenn lost her husband that she came home to live with us. And I didn't know her. She had two small children, Martha and Jewel. And uh, things were going well until I got into trouble. And Glenn, being a strong disciplinarian, uh, I was small enough that she took me off on her shoulder and took care of business. So she wasn't my friend from then on. I was a mother's baby, and I didn't want to be disciplined by anyone else, not even my mother, but she took care of that. But I am grateful for the life of Glenn and my family. A typical scenario, my phone rings, I says, hello, Glance, this is headquarters. I called you yesterday. You haven't called me back. You need to call me. Okay. I am so sorry, Glenn. Uh, you know, I love you, and I would never do anything to hurt you. We had such a relationship. She earned the name headquarters because she made it her business to know what was going on in the family. So if you wanted to know anything, just call headquarters. <laughs> headquarters could give you all of the scoop, tell you what this, what that. That was headquarters. It was a few days ago that uh, I received a call, and she says, Clarence, this is headquarters. I says, wow. She sounds so chipper, so energetic. I was just amazed. I said, wow, she sounds like a little girl. And we talked and we chatted and we went on. And then later on, as I talked with Phyllis, she says, you know that call you got the other day? I says, yeah, she says, uh, she seems to be going down. She's not talking much now. I says, okay. So I thought about it and I said, I really need to go see her. And when my wife and I urged, we says, you need to go see her tonight. And we went there, went in the room. She was very quiet. She was not speaking. And I prayed for her and walked out of the room. And probably five minutes later, Carolyn says, Uncle Clarence, come here. And she was gone. She says, it looks like she waited for you to come before she could leave. So I am so grateful, and I want to express my thanks to uh, Sandra, Carolyn, and Phyllis, and the rest of the family. They took care of Sister Glenn. <laughs> Whatever she wanted, however she wanted, they made it their business to take care of her. 
And that made me so happy because we loved her. Glenn had her way of doing things and we all knew it, but we knew her. Speaking on behalf of the siblings, I have no more brothers left. I have three sisters left. But I have today a host of nephews here. And I want to honor them and respect the, the, them. So all of my nephews, grand, great grand, whoever you are, would you just stand and let us see you? Nephew. What a blessing. I will see you in June at the family reunion, all right? All of the nieces, I don't want to be partial, all of my nieces, all of my, uh, I stay in trouble because they give me a hard time. All of them want to be my favorite nieces. So look at all of my favorite nieces. Bless you. I love you. God loves you. Thank you so much. I want to just appreciate many of the pastors and friends that have come today. Thank you so much for your presence today. God bless you.
you would never know. Um, it was just total starvation and love. Hospital workers and home health care workers always come to me again about the way they did to hear from my grandmother, so I'm thankful for them. Because it was not easy. I can only imagine having to watch my mama in her weekly statement. The word to her was that, that we're going to take care of No shame when you might not see the people in facilities, but they took care of her. Um, my mom and my aunt always found a way to make her very, very comfortable at home. And in many days, I can see the frustration. I can feel the tiredness many times. They have changed themselves, but they ignore because of love. And I don't know how to thank them for not only doing that for my grandmother, but for also doing that for me. For sure, you gotta keep pushing for love. And I love you all. I'm also a granddaughter. Uh, I just want to come and say, explain like the little gifts that you were able to give when you walked in today. Um, the little satchel bags that we prepared for everyone who came in, they are blue for her favorite color. And also inside you have tea, the aforementioned tea, but also tying it together, you know, I have to add this in because you know, my brother kind of ate me up early in the prayer. Um, but I have to add that uh, <laughs> the tea bag is not just symbolic for what was one of her favorite things to do, which was to have a nice glass of tea, but also to all the amount of knowledge that she held with inside all the tea, because she got, she had a lot of facts um, about people. Um, and also the cough drop that she, the ever-present cough drop, all grandmothers have some sort of hard candy with them, but her choose, chosen one was a uh, <laughs> cough drop, so I hope that everyone takes one with them on their way out, um, and think of her when you have a nice glass of tea tonight. Thank you, Ariel. That was so special. And Sister Glenn, of course, was very sharp, very sharp. Amen, always clean. If you would notice to your left, um, and those of you on the side behind you, uh, that's the seat that she adored when she came into this building and so we will keep that seat of course present um uh, for a while if you have not had a chance to there in honor sister glenn elsie glenn um she and i talked to one of her running buddies uh, mother irma hall on yesterday uh, that was the section over there that's the section that lets the preacher know when you're talking too long they're gone, they're gone. Yeah, yeah, this, it's over. And I just appreciate that. Um, so now we're gonna move forward. Um, again, we have some resolutions and Charla is on to read the resolution from the church. Now, I have a resolution from DeSoto. Um, and if there is a representative from the city of DeSoto that would like to read this resolution, we will take time for you to do that. Otherwise, if there are any other resolutions from a church that we do not know of or an organization, raise your hand because we don't have them. And I do not want to overlook anyone because so many of you have had an impact on this community through this family. And if you don't read them, Sister Carolyn's gonna mess you up real bad. So are there any other resolutions, period, that I may overlook? Okay, read. Sister Charlotte, thank you. Follow me and I will make you fishers of men, Matthew 4, 19, Saturday, March 30th, 2024, to the family of Sister Glenn, Elsie Glenn. Resolution of respect in loving memory. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted, Matthew 5 and 4. To Sister Sandra, Carolyn, Phyllis, Bree family and friends, on behalf of the officers and members of the Inspiring Body of Christ Church and the IBOC Significant Seniors, we offer these words of consolation. Today we mourn the loss of Sister Glenn, Elsie Glenn. Although our grief pales in comparison 
To the pain you are feeling, we want you to know that the Abbott family shares your loss today. Though we are saddened by her passing, we stand strong in faith in God, praying his comfort and peace upon you all. May you find the strength and may you find the strength in the word of God to get you through your sorrow. Be it resolved. Be it resolved that we rest in the assurance that Sister Gwen is absent from the body and now in the presence of our loving God. Be it resolved that we know we will one day be reunited with our sister Gwen when we are united with Jesus Christ in the fullness of God's mercy. Our prayer for you today is that the peace of God keeps your mind, the love of God comforts your heart, and your hope in Christ gives you strength to endure in this difficult time. Humbly submitted in faith and appreciation on this 30th day of March in the year of our Lord, 2024. Inspiring Body of Christ Church, Dr. Ricky G. Rush, Pastor, Deacon Charles Robinson, Chairman of the Board. Thank you. She poured so much into me day by day. And um, that last day, I waited for her. You know, we sat there and we talked and I listened to her and I kept going, Carol, and was like, calm your nerves, calm your nerves. But it was like she was my mom, my grandmother. It would be days that I didn't call and she'd tell her, now where is Angela, where is Angela? Because I'm sick of y'all. <laughs> But she was just a joy to work for. At the time when I got her, she was coming out of the hospital. And at, the, at this time last year. So she went back into hospital right after her birthday. And it took such a toll on me. I don't usually get that involved with my patients or that emotionally, you know. But, but I think Miss, Miss Glenn, she was, I mean, she would let you know what's on her mind, whether you like it or not. You know, and Carolyn and Phyllis and Sandra, I have worked for so many families. I've been doing this for our 20 years, um, you know, and I've never, and I promise I've never seen families take such good care of their mom. I mean, they made sure she had everything she wanted. If she wanted a new position in the bed, they would do it. <laughs> you know, and she talked about um, all the time. She's like, Angela, I want you to watch him now. You know, you need to watch him. She's your pastor. Well, she's good. <laughs> <laughs> and Carolyn and Phyllis, that's what led me to the inspiring body of Christ is this family. I haven't joined yet, but I am. Because I love this church and I love how they cater to the children. And Miss Glenn and Carolyn and Phyllis and Sandra, I want y'all to know. It will never be a day that I don't think about your mom when I see these little tiaras, these hats, and lemon tea. Because now you want to know the problem they had. She had she had a problem with me with her tea and her cookie. Yeah. <laughs> but she kind of eased out of it. She was like, uh, Carol was like, I start cooking for every morning before you come. And so I knew that was the way of saying you're not cooking right. <laughs> <laughs> She'll sit there in the, in, the, in the kitchen with me while I'm cooking, and she's like, what you doing? I said, I flip your Nah, you didn't flip that too many times. Nah, mm -mm. that toast is too brown. Mm -mm. Uh-uh, my tea ain't got no sugar, and I said, well, 
Phyllis told me, I don't care what Phyllis said, you put some more honey in that tea. <laughs> but it was such an honor to work with this family wow. and see the love and care that they did. You know, they took care of the mom. Like Ryan said, it wasn't nothing she could ask for that they wouldn't get. And every day they made me feel like I was their sister instead right. of their caregiver. So on behalf of Q&A Personal Care Services, on behalf of me, I thank you for giving me the honor of taking care of your miles. Thank you. That's amazing. She cared and took care of Sister Glenn. And Carolyn and the ladies took care of the caregiver. I can't tell you, this was amazing. I'm thinking, is this a volunteer position or what? I can't tell you how many times I'm preaching and walking by the aisles and she stopped me and asked for prayer. Mother Glenn would ask for prayer for the caregiver's mama. I'm going, wait, are you okay? And I remember when, when uh, I got the message about mother passing, I asked Carolyn two words. Are you sure? Three words, are you sure? I don't know how many times we've been to this point where Mama's gone, and here she's back again. I said, where did she go? <laughs> the wonderful story about how Ryan was called late to go in and help her rescue, bring her back. She has come back so many times, and that's why the funeral was put over like another extra week, y'all. We wanted to make sure she didn't rise. Um, okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead, you. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Melvin Harden Jr., better known as Ham Hock. I love Maya Glenn. I'm gonna miss her, but I got a lot of good memories with her. I wanna say to my cousins now here on earth, great job, well done. Good and faithful black IP Christian servants. You have done an amazing job taking care of my Aunt Glenn. She thought she was a bother to y'all, and I used to tell her all the time, all you done done for us ain't Glenn, you'll never a bother. Phyllis would call me sometimes and say she was, wasn't doing too good. I need you to just do you. I say, I got you, cuz. I call her, talk to her, or she'll call me. So how you doing, Aunt Glenn, Elsie, Glenn, Glenn? Hey, him, nah, I'm not through. Glenn, Glenn, Elsie, Glenn, how you doing? You know, so we were talking everything. Uh, back in 2019, I crushed my left heel, and up until now, I had three surgeries. I would call and talk to her. I'm sitting up grieving and hurting over my one ailment. I talked to my Aunt Glenn. She has a multiple of ailments. Before we get off the phone, I'm just there in tears, thanking God for what I'm going through, you know? She would tell me about, well, Philly's saying this, Carolyn's saying this. I said, don't worry about it, Aunt Glenn. When we all get old, I got you. When they start complaining about stuff, I got you. You know, so we would have conversations about a lot of stuff. Some of the conversations I really knew she should have been talking to one, if not all three of her black eyed peas about this conversation, or definitely one of her sisters. But I'm going to really miss her. Um, Phyllis called me last week, told me she wasn't doing too good. So I said, well, I wanna come over. She said, you can come over anytime you want, but she's not who you remember. I said, I don't care. I just wanna be there in her presence. So I went over Sunday, I sat there at the edge of the bed, put my hand on her foot, looked at the Christian markings on the wall, all the pictures of her and her brothers and sisters, and I just started thinking, I am so thankful to have been born in a blood lineage of Christians. Not just on my dad's side, but on my mom's side. The majority of my uncles on both sides were ministers. There was no way I could do no wrong because I had too much prayer over my shoulders, you know. But I just want to say I'm, 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 I'm going to miss her, but I have excellent, great memories of her it's like when Phyllis told me that she was gone after I hung up the phone. It was almost as if I could just see her standing before God and all of her brothers and sisters and her mom and dad waiting to embrace her. Seeing her go in and turning flips because I knew the pain she was dealing with with her back and everything. 
I am just so happy. I used to pray to God. She's been a faithful servant for 97 years. Can you just please give her one day of no pain? Give her one day where she could wake up and feel like she could run again. You know, she has such determination to get up every morning to just walk and get to the kitchen and eat her breakfast. Just so much strength in her. Gave me so much determination. And I'm going to miss that about her, you know, but I have a lot of memories here. So to my cousins, I love y'all, all of y'all. I love y'all. You know I'm here for you. Morning, noon, evening, night, don't matter. I got you. I love y'all. Y'all have a good one. Good afternoon. I am so honored to be here today. Um, <clears throat> pardon me. My name is Candy Harden Franklin, and um, Elsie Glenn was my aunt. And um, I feel really blessed to have known Aunt Glenn, to have loved Aunt Glenn, and most importantly, to have been loved by Aunt Glenn. Um, you know, everybody, everybody wants to be the favorite. And um, it's a hard job. <laughs> it's a hard job. Um, and Glenn had a way, though, of making everybody kind of feel like the favorite. I mean, you know, my name is on the program, so let's just <laughs> say that. But she had a way of just making you feel um, special. And Amen. as I have... That's right. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor Rush. Amen. As, I, um, as I have gotten older... I've really come to appreciate the just persistent presence of longevity in our family. And I've had an opportunity to really develop relationships with people in my grandparents' generation. Like as they've gotten older and just um, taking time to go and hang out with them and talk to them and have conversations and um, learn from them things that I just probably wouldn't have otherwise. And that is what I got from my relationship with Aunt Glenn. I would call Phyllis or send um, Carolyn a text, hey, I want to come by and see Aunt Glenn. And they never, ever told me no. They always let me share her. They always let me share her. And that's the one thing that I am so grateful for. Um, you know, we all know people that can fake being nice. You can be nice depending on you know, your circumstances and just kind of put a face on. But it's really difficult to fake kindness because that comes from within. And Aunt Glenn was just kind. And it was evident in the way that people responded to her. When I would go and see her at the hospital, the texts would just kind of gravitate to her. And they'd be like, oh, well, I need to go check on Miss Glenn. They just loved on her because she was a lovable person. And I think Ryan said it best that y'all are love. Y'all have really set the bar for not only how to love your parent, love your mother, but most importantly to me is how you loved each other. You gave each other grace. I saw it. You gave each other your time with your mom because you understood that all of you, all of you had a need to spend time with her, to love on her, to be in her presence. And that was so encouraging to me, honestly. It was just very, it was very encouraging to see how you came together and loved her together. Um, one of my favorite memories of Aunt Glenn I used to sing with a cover band. And she came along with, <laughs> it was midnight 
at this bar and grill and Aunt Glenn came and she had her hearing aids in. It was loud. She ended up taking her hearing aids out. She was there. It, it was 12.30 or 1 o'clock. And she had church the next day. Yes, by, and I'm sure she did not miss. But that was just, that is one of my fondest memories of her, that she came out to support me. And she was, that just cemented her, cemented her in my heart at that moment, just that she, was, she would do that for me. And I would also like to say that um, Angela, I don't know where she's sitting, but y'all, Angela was amazing. She, she's just amazing. Being, being a nurse, we see sometimes people just kind of go through the motions and you want someone to take care of your family member like it would be their family member, but that does not always happen. And just the way that she cared for her and loved on her. And even the first time that I met her, I sent Carolyn a text saying, hey, I was going to come over and see Aunt Glenn. And she said, well, I'm not there. Angela's there. And I got there, and Angela answered the door. And she was just kind of like, she got a game of the look. And I was like, because the wires, I guess Carolyn hadn't let her know yet that I was on the way. And I said, oh, no. I said, I appreciate you doing your due diligence, ma'am, because you don't know me, and I just appreciate you advocating for her and protecting her while her family is away. So I just want to thank you personally. Um, it's a hard job just being a caregiver, and we really appreciate you sharing your love with her. Um, to the rest of the family, my cousins, um, Ryan, Sharla, Billy, you did eat that prayer. Uh, you did. Yeah, you did. <laughs> Um, Billy, Sharla, Ryan, Ariel, y'all are so blessed to have had Aunt Glenn, and um, y'all know I'm always there, um, anytime, anytime. Um, this is the time that families should come together, but even after this, it shouldn't just be in these moments that we come together, we should be together all the time. So I hope y'all know that I love y'all very much. I love y'all very, very much. And I'm so glad that we have the relationship that we have. And I look forward to that continuing. Phyllis, Carolyn, Sandra, <laughs> y'all are my girls. I love y'all. Uh, hello, how y'all doing? Um, oh, my bad. How you doing? Um, wait, wait, do, you, do you sing in that band she was in? <laughs> Who is it? <laughs> okay. okay keep, keep going. All right. I got the mic over here. <laughs> um... <laughs> I love Aunt Glenn, and uh, I used to call her Aunt Glenn, called her on the phone, we talk, we laugh, we joke, and um, my sister Janice, I told her that um, I need to see my Aunt Glenn, I, I really need to see her, to see how she was doing and everything, so she carried me over there, and uh, we have a long talk, we, we had a long talk, um, my sister Janice, we took pictures of her and everything, and I, I, I'm going to miss her, but I know she's in a better place, and uh, I love everybody, and uh, I work for uh, Pace and Ross Learning Center, and uh, they signed a special card to the family, and I look around, She was loved. She was loved so many ways and kind, sweet. I'm just going to miss her. And uh, all the grandkids and the great grandkids and cousins, all that, I love you. I love you from the bottom of my heart. And I'm just going to be strong for y'all. Y'all should be strong for me. So, oh, I got one more thing. 
Okay. Okay. A couple years back, uh, me and my mom, we walked over in Glen House. That was a long walk. It was. It, but we made it. We did. We walked over in Glen House, and uh, I, I didn't get in trouble, but my mama did because we walked. And, they, and, and Glenn and Uncle Phil, they was in the house talking and stuff. They said, where y'all come from? I said, we walked, we walked over to your house and just wanted to see you. It was a nice day. And wind was blowing. We had our head on. I came. We were marching. So we had fun. It was, it was a nice day, real nice. And uh, whew, I tell you, it was a, it was a long walk. <laughs> I, think, I, think, I think we did some exercise that day. <laughs> But it was all good, and we laughed, and like I said, I'm going to miss her. She's in my heart, and uh, I'm just praying for everybody. Thank you. Y'all, that's family, amen. We all have family. God bless you. Okay, and, and um, um, uh, okay, the family had... Okay, and this is a remark. This is from the city of DeSoto. Uh, there we are. We're back on track. Okay. Actually, they, I don't know if the mayor is here or not, but I am Patricia Coleman, and I probably am the best daughter other than Carolyn, Phyllis, and Sandra. Um, Carolyn, there was so much I was going to say, but I don't want to prolong the time. I'm the uh, elder of Jubilee uh, Christian Church in DeSoto, Elder Patricia Coleman, but I'm here today as just Carolyn's best friend, and I love Carol, and I love Sandra, I love Phyllis, Charla, Billy. Um, they adopted me, they just didn't know, but they adopted me, and I love this family. Um, Mrs. Glenn and I, we were bling queens. So we wore bling. Um, I tried to represent today, but I didn't do the best job I normally would have. But I did put just, if you get a little bit close, I did put just a little bit glitter right here. And uh, Carolyn said she had gold, so Mrs. Glenn, I am representing my gold eyeliner for you today. And I brought her something. Um, I don't know who, who can take over as the bling queen, but she always received a brooch from me. And look, I didn't give her the, those cheap brooches. I gave her the ones when you put them on and pin them, they pin immediately. They didn't bend or anything. So, Miss Glenn and I talked about a lot of things. I won't go into that, but this is the brooch. Carolyn, if you'll come. Um, Carolyn's not my bling queen, but I'm going to make her the bling queen before it's over with. <laughs> and I love you all on behalf of the Coleman's family. We love you, Carolyn, and let's keep the bling going. And God bless you all. Amen. Brother Fletcher and also a representative from the Greater El Bethel. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Giving praises to God, to Pastor Rush, the family. So I'm friend slash Greater El Bethel slash 10th Street. 10th Street in the house. That's the Freedman's Town over in Oak Cliff where we grew up, where uh, the Glens were on 10th Street, we were on Church Street. Now, my great-grandmother and Mother Glenn were best friends. And this scripture says, two are better than one because they have good reward for their toil. For if they fall, one will lift his fellow. My great-grandmother, her best friend, passed three years ago at age 109. And she kept on lifting. She lifted when my mom passed, and she continued to lift me up. She gave me the courage. She encouraged me. And she would say, you know, I just don't want to be a burden to my family. I said, Mother Glenn, you're not a burden. We love you. They love you. And on, again, on behalf now from the Greater El Bethel Baptist Church, she was a mother on the mother's board. All the children, she made sure they were in church. We had a balcony, 
And on Sunday mornings, she made sure that Lester and Kendrick were not cutting up. She would look upside. She would sit on the side and she'd look up, up at the balcony to make sure that not only them, but we were uh, doing what we were supposed to do. Again, I love the family. You did a wonderful job. Thank you. Good afternoon. How's everyone doing? I am Deacon Fletcher. I just want to thank God for my amazing pastor, Pastor Rush. I am, I, the young lady before me said she was on the program. That meant she was special, so I am on the program. So I feel that I'm a little, a little special with Mother Glenn. Uh, I just want to thank God uh, for Mother Glenn. I thank God for her pouring into my family, my wife, my daughter, and just being a light. She was just so much of a light, and I'm grateful for that. And I'm not going to be long. But um, I have several names. People call me Deacon Fletcher. People call me Brother Fletcher. People call me, uh, my wife called me by my first name when she mad at me. But uh, I learned last week that I had another name. And uh, I learned from Sister Campbell and Sister Phyllis and Sister Sandra that my name was Stepdad. So I'm, I'm not going to go into that any further. I'm not going to go into it any further. But it happened after that night at the club, uh, though. I'm just going to tell but, you, I'm, but, uh, I'm still the pastor. But Mama, Mama Glenn and Sister Fletcher had a little covenant. I don't know nothing about it, but, but, but I, 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 I'm, honored. I'm honored by that. And I thank God for you guys for, for being such a beautiful family. I just want to end with this. Proverbs 31 says in the Message Bible, it says, The woman that's to be admired and to be praised is the woman that lived her life in the fear of the Lord. Give her everything she deserves and adorn her life with praise. I just want to say today that every time I was around Sister Glenn, I admired her wisdom. I admired her strength. I admired her passion. Uh, I, I was always able to praise her. I always told her how beautiful she was. I always wanted to tell her how, how awesome she is, and I'm thankful for that. I just want to say the second part of that verse says that give her everything she deserves. Sister Campbell, Sister Phyllis, Sister Sandra, you gave her everything she deserved. You gave her comfort. You gave her peace. You gave her joy. And I just want to say that was a blessing. And on today, on today, I'm grateful that we're here today to adorn her life with praise, to celebrate her. I'm not just going to say I'm going to celebrate Sister Glenn. I'm going to continue to celebrate Sister Glenn because I know she's not gone anywhere. I know her life is still going. Amen. God bless you. I love you. And I thank you. Amen. <clears throat> yeah, that, that night after that, uh, that fellowship, I was, uh, <laughs> uh, no, I'm going to talk about it right quick. I'm gonna, you know, that, that she, she loved being around younger people, and Brother Fletcher and all of our guys just went out of the way to make sure that that, that seat there, that will always, it will always glow. Uh, as a matter of fact, what we did is put the seat there because she brought her seat with her and most of the time we make sure that when she's not there, you don't want anybody to try to replace that, but we'll be there for a while. Now we have a presentation, a slide presentation. Some of you saw it coming in. Um, I don't have my ears on, so I can't reach our technicians right now, but I was trying to see about how long, Brother Carter, is the... Is the uh, it's 21 minutes, so I pray that all of y'all saw it when you were coming in. If not, you have a QR code on your seats. I, the Lord just moved. Did y'all see how fast he moved right there? That was a wonderful thing. I would not have this pastor waiting for 21 minutes uh, before the message. So we're going to um, say uh, something right now. I want um, our audiovisual team. I'm always using this illustration, and I see... Some of you here today that may not be members of this church, you used to be members of this church, you're still members of the church, but maybe haven't been present in a while. Sometimes people come, people go, and the church stays like at the airport. The terminal always stays there. And the joy I have as pastoring is watching planes come in, get filled, and taking off. But I'm always telling this story, and if my audio team can help me, because I don't, I'm going to now make room for this pastor. And I like to tell the story of how sometimes 
when I'm at the airport, or many of you are at the airport, we see a lot of things at the airport. And one of the things we observe the most are how many famous people, how many productive people, rich people, uh, come and get off of those planes. And when you're on a plane, you don't know who you're on the plane with. You really don't. Um, and what we notice is rich people, famous people, productive people, celebrities, and regular, regular old people like me get on the same plane and we all have somewhere we're trying to go. And so most people stand at the airport and they watch those planes. And I love telling this story because it's absolutely true. But today, it sends a great message. If you'll ever go there, you'll notice on those planes, all of these planes are taking off and they're all there. And as you notice these planes, uh, they're all at the terminal. And when they're pulling away, sometimes people are waving and looking to see who's gonna get off of those planes. And those planes on there are a lot of famous, fantastic people. Okay, freeze right there for a minute. On that plane, we don't know who's famous on that plane. We don't know what rich people are on, that, on those planes. We don't know where they're going, how much money they have, how much they possess, how many trials, what criminals, what, we don't know, but somebody's always on those planes that are going places and people are fascinated with celebrities and all of that stuff, everybody but me, I just didn't fall in that category of being fascinated by celebrities. But a lot of people are fascinated by that. And I want you to look at that plane right now for a second. And what most people notice are the planes. And we hear sermons preached and we hear inspirations given about how much, how high we're gonna fly. We wanna get above the clouds and we wanna be able to look down on our enemies. And we want all these things that make us wanna be famous planes. But I want you to focus for 38 seconds now, and I'm done, on push roll. The, the little, not the plane, but the little blue bus right there. That little blue bus, most people don't know who's in it. They don't care who's in it. They don't know anything about their personal lives. That little blue bus, though, pushes those planes back. And if it were not for that little blue bus, all of those famous people, all of those rich, wealthy people, all of you that are in here right now, that are somebody's somebody, all of you who are looking for those thumbs up and those famous likes and those once in a lifetime times, you can make a hint, tell a story, tell a lie to get famous. YouTube, your tube, everybody's tube, television tube, I don't know. Those planes carry famous people for whatever reason. But if it wasn't for that little blue bus, those planes would never have been pushed away and taken off. I can't talk about the degrees that Mother Glenn received. I can't talk about the cars that she got or the credit she had, had or the houses that she lived in or the places that she went or the famous people that she had a chance to meet and have dinner with. Mother Glenn was never that. But Mother Glenn was that little blue bus. She pushed so many people away so y'all could take off. I appreciate Phyllis, I appreciate Sandra, I appreciate Ariel, Billy, I appreciate all of you, but if it had not been for her, I don't care how far you climb and where you go and who knows you and what famous people you attach yourselves with, that blue bus had to push you away. That's who Mother Glenn was today. She was that little blue bus. A lot of people didn't even know her whole name. I remember when we called after she passed, we said we need to come and pick up the body of Sister Glenn. Okay, what's her first name? Glenn. Well, okay, we got there. What's her last name? Glenn. I heard your pastor, but who is it? The mother's name is Glenn. Well, we need our first and last name. We say, Glenn, Glenn, Pastor Rush, what you playing for? Why you playing? It's a serious moment, but that's her name. Most people didn't even know her name. But if you look around this city and you look around this room and you look in these pulpits, you'll see who she pushed away. Don't forget that. If you're not famous, be the person that pushes others away. That's why I, I'm grateful about being Pastor Rush. I may not go in a lot of those places, but Mother Glenn, when I was down and feeling pitiful, she called me and pushed me away and said, keep on flying, Pastor. That's why y'all hear her say she loved her pastor, because she was a part of the pushback team that said, you're not through flying yet. So to anybody in here who doesn't feel like you were part of this program, you were, because she produced the daughters and sons and family members that pushed y'all away. 
I want to introduce a very great man of God. And he's going to bring us now into the fullness of all of this. And he's going to speak to all of these planes who have taken off. And he himself is a super jet 747 space shuttle preacher. He's great. He's powerful. He's come from ups and downs. But he's also had the honor of being pushed away by Elsie Glenn Epps. Elsie, Glenn, Elsie, Glenn, Elsie, Glenn, Elsie, Glenn, Elsie, Glenn. And I just want us to, if we don't mind, stand on our feet for just a minute as we give honor to our eulogist today, Apostle Herman Murray, the full gospel church. Thank you so much, sir. Come on, let's put our hands together and thank God for this wonderful opportunity that God has given us today. Come on, clap your hands and praise the Lord. This is still the day that the Lord has made. We have a risk. Oh, come on, I see hands, but I don't hear no voices. We owe God a praise for the life, amen, the legacy, the memory of such a great woman, amen, Mother Glenn Elsie. Glenn. I know the Bible is right. The word of God declares that elders that rule well should be counted worthy of not just honor, but of double honor. And certainly today I want to take the time to appreciate your celebrated pastor here at the inspiring body of Christ. Would you clap those hands and let's thank God for the pastor Ricky Rush. Oh, come on. We can do better than that. Thank God for him. And to all of these wonderful men and women of God, to this family and to all of you, my family, and to all of you, my father's children. God bless you. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. We're here today to celebrate the life of this great and this awesome woman of God. This, this was my aunt. Amen. And anybody that knows me know how I feel about my, my aunts and my uncle. Amen. I absolutely love them and I love, I love her still. Amen. I listen to all of the great words that were spoken and I'll hasten into the word of God. Amen. But I listened to all of the great words that were spoken and this was somebody. This was some kind of woman made us all feel like we were so special and so important to her. And I'm just grateful and I'm thankful for all that God allowed us to share, for the moments, for the conversations. I appreciate God for that. The other day I was going through my phone and I saw some voicemails and I said, let me clear these out. And I came across a couple of voicemails from Aunt Glenn that I didn't even know I had. And I pushed play and she said, Herman, this is Aunt Glenn. I just wanted to call you today and tell you that I'm feeling pretty good. And I said, God's got his own way of encouraging us when we need it the most. And I'm just grateful that God blessed us with the time that he did. 97 years is a long time, amen, to be in this world, considering the fact that the Bible says the days of the years will be three score years and ten. Then if by reason of strength they be four score years, then is their strength labor and sorrow, and we'll soon cut off and fly away. God blessed us to live 97 years, and we praise God for that. But you know, I thought about it. If she had lived 197 years, we still would have said she's gone too soon. Amen. Because when you have good people like Mother Glenn or my Aunt Glenn, amen, then you just want to keep them around as long as you can. And I'm so thankful, amen, that she and her, her spare time, amen, would come and visit us, amen. And she, amen, would just encourage us as well. And I'm thankful for this opportunity. I'm thankful to Pastor Rush for giving me this opportunity. He's been so gracious, amen, with his pulpit today. And I'm thankful, amen. There's nothing that I can say today that can help a hinder in Glenn. She's lived her life. She's told her story, amen. Everything that she has done speaks for her today. So my job today is not to speak to her, but can I talk to you, those of us that remain today, because this day is coming for every one of us. And we've got to be prepared for this day 
when it shall come. And I've heard it, amen, uh, so many times that it's his to call and ours to answer. And we've got to be ready to answer when the Lord shall call our name. The book of Revelation, the revelation of Jesus Christ, the 20th chapter, uh, the Bible uh, gives us this intelligence from the 12th through the 15th verses. And John said, and I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened. Another book was opened, which is the book of life. The dead were judged out of those things that were written in the books according to their works. The sea gave up the dead which were in it and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them and they were judged every man according to their works. Death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Verse 15 says, And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the, into the lake of fire. But, but let, let's just look at that. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life, amen, was cast in, into the lake of fire. And I know we're at a, at, at a homegoing celebration today, but would you, would you find somebody close to you and just tell them, make sure that your name is in the book. Yeah, make sure that, that your name is in the book. Amen. And it's not hard to make sure that your name is in that book. Sons and daughters, as I hasten today, we are encouraged as the people of God to always live our lives uh, uh, with a view to the end. Amen. Everything that we do today, we have to do it. Uh, with the understanding that this is taking us somewhere. Whatever we're doing now is going to determine, amen, how we fare later on. That's the reason why we've got to live, amen, with intention. We've got to do what it is that we do, amen, with intention because everything that we uh, aspire to do in the future depends on what we are doing right now. As the children of God, we have been called upon to live by faith. And that's something that a lot of people talk about, amen, but not a lot of people really know about. We've been called to live our lives by faith. That means we've got to trust in God. There are things we don't know, things that we have not seen. There are some experiences that we have not had. But if we would lean and learn to depend on God, he is able to carry us through through whatever it is that we face, through the ups and the downs, through the hills, amen, and the valleys of our lives, we've got to learn how to trust in God. When you understand faith in God and understand why it's so important to live by faith, amen, then you begin to realize that God has always desired that we understand that there's a greater reality than what we can see. You've got to know there's so much more to us, so much more to our existence, so much more to this world than the things that we can see. As a matter of fact, the word of God declares that the things that are seen are really passing away. And so what is the Bible telling us? He's telling us that we cannot get tied into this stuff down here. Now you've got to realize there are a lot of people, amen, their entire identity is connected to the stuff that they have they've got to have big houses and big cars they've got to have a lot of money y'all getting quiet today amen they've got to have a whole lot of friends they need a lot of likes but you've got to realize that your life is not tied into the stuff that we have down here and I'm glad about that because some of us amen will never be millionaires and I'm okay with that amen some of us will never live we're in a mansion on a hill and I'm fine with that amen because the reality is is if I'm a child of God I don't have to have all of that now but God promised me another day he promised me that there's going to come a time amen when everything that people have is going to come to know that's the reason why your identity has to be in Christ your identity cannot be amen in jobs and in possessions it cannot be in houses and it cannot be in 
in things, amen, we've got to realize that our identity has to be in Christ. We can't get tied into cars and, amen, all of these material things. Why? Because it is fleeting and it's passing away. Amen. This stuff don't mean nothing now. And I tell them over there, amen, at church that we look at the things that we have now and we ascribe value to that. Amen. But God is saying you've got to see it in its proper perspective. All of the cars that we can drive, they look nice. Amen. But the reality is it's not going to last forever. The houses that we live in look real nice. Amen. But all it takes to lose it is a match. Y'all ain't saying nothing here. Amen. And all of our stuff can go up in flames. So that means this stuff cannot be our treasure. So we cannot look at the stuff that we have and think that this is our treasure because it's too easy to lose it. Amen. They used to make cars out of something. Amen. Now they don't make cars out of nothing. Used to be you could hit a tree. Amen. Put it in reverse and keep on going. Now you hit a curb and your whole car total out. Amen. They're not making stuff like they used to. Amen. So what are we saying now? You've got to understand that this cannot be your treasure because it's too easy to lose it. But rather our treasure is on the other side. I wish I could get at least about 17 of you to look at somebody and tell a neighbor my real treasure is on the other side. So what Paul says to us in 1 Corinthians 7 and 29, he says, brethren, time is short. He said time is short. Amen. And because time is so short, amen, we've got to make sure that we are good stewards of our time. Do you realize that this life is not an opportunity for us to get rich? Amen. But rather this life is an opportunity for us to sure up ourselves so that we know that when this day comes for us, we're going to be ready to see the Lord. Amen. This is not a time to get famous and amen, a lot of time to get likes, but this is the time now to make sure that when we leave this place, we've got somewhere else to go. Amen. That's why the Bible tells us that this world is passing away. This thing is almost over. Look at what we're seeing now. Amen. Look at the wars and the rumors of wars. Look at the pestilence, the diseases, the famines all over the place. Do you know the Bible said these are the things that we would see prior to the return of the Lord? And we're seeing that stuff right now. But sadly, there are some people whose focus is only living in this world. And the problem is it doesn't matter. Amen. How much time you live one day we've got to leave this place and when we leave here we better know that we've got somewhere better than this for us to go amen this world is chaotic amen it's disassembling itself right before our very eyes and there are still people that think that advancement and pleasure is their highest aim in this life but they do that without a view to eternity as if we're going to live here forever but can I tell you sons and daughters of the kingdom that time is winding up look at us now amen look at how old we are now. Amen. Seemed like just a few years ago, we were in high school running across the playground. Amen. And now look at us. Y'all done got quiet here. Amen. Look at us. Seemed like just a few years ago, we were holding children in our arm. Amen. Look at how grown they are now. Amen. Time is moving on. And so I don't care how young we feel. The reality is we're not as young as we used to be. Amen. Look at us wearing glasses now that we didn't used to have to wear. Amen. Look at us now doing things we didn't used to have to do because these are the signs that are telling us that time is running out. And can I tell you, I don't care how young you dress. I don't care how young you talk. Amen. Life is moving on. I think about the clock on the wall. We look at it. Amen. And just pass it by. We really don't even focus on it. But do you know every time that second hand ticks. It is ticking our lives away. That's the reason why the Bible has declared, amen, that our lives 
life is as a vapor. Amen. That's really what it is. It's here today and it's gone later on today. So we've got a responsibility ahead of us and that is to make sure that when it's our time to leave this time space continuum, amen, that God knows our name. And he said, listen, your name has to be written in the Lamb's book of life. What is the book of life? It is the written record scribed by the hand of Jesus Christ himself. It contains the names of all of those that are blood washed and blood bought. Is there anybody here can say, Brother Herman, I've been blood washed and I have been purchased by the blood of the Lamb. It is a list of overcomers. Those who stood for God in the midst of a wicked world. And can I tell you, this is a wicked world that we're in now. Amen. This is a world that don't like our Christ. They don't like our Savior. But he's looking for us to stay strong and determined that it doesn't matter who falls out of love with God. My testimony remains falling in love with Jesus. It's still the best thing that I have ever done. Amen. It is the list of overcomers. Amen. It's different from the church roster because you can sign the church roster yourself. And there are a lot of people that feel like because their name is on the church road that that's what it means. Amen. To have favor with God. But can I tell you, even greater than the church road is the Lamb's book of life. Amen. I'm glad that people go to church and I'm glad that they associate with the house of God. He says we should. Amen. But more than anything else, amen, I want to make sure that my name is written in that book. I, I wish I could find at least 18 of you to look at somebody and tell them make sure that your name is in the book. Look at what he says in 2 Timothy 2 and 19 as I hasten. He says nevertheless the foundation of God stands sure and it has this seal that the Lord knows them that belong to him. Can I tell you, brothers and sisters, everybody don't belong to God. Amen. But if you do, you ought to be praising him right now. I said, if you really do belong to God, if you've just not confessed him with your mouth, amen, but you believe it in your heart, amen, you ought to give God some praise right now. You are among the elite of the world. And that's why I tell them, don't let them look down on you as a child of God. The devil is alive. It means something to be a child of God. It means something to be on the Lord's side. He said the Lord knows them that are his and let everyone that name it the name of the Lord. Let them depart from iniquity. Look at Revelation the third chapter and the fifth verse the Bible declares he that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment and I will not blot his name out of the book of life but will confess his name before my father and before his angels. So what are you saying, Brother Herman? I'm telling you, God is looking for overcomers. He's looking for some people now that can take a licking that the world is putting on us and still hold on to God. He's looking for some people now that have gone through the worst that the world could throw at you, but yet and still your feet are firmly planted in God, saying that I shall not be moved. You've got to know that it's not that we're not going to suffer. He said in the world, you shall have tribulation. He said, but be of good cheer. Why? Because I have overcome the world. And that's what I come to tell somebody today. That if he could overcome it, so can we. As a matter of fact, amen. This Sunday is the resurrection Sunday. And we praise God because it's the time when we celebrate. Amen. The resurrection of Jesus Christ. But can I tell you, brothers and sisters, there's another resurrection coming. Amen. And that resurrection is to receive you unto himself. I wish I could find just a couple of you on my way to my seat to tell somebody, thank God for the resurrection. I thank God for the resurrection. Amen. It's not just about Jesus getting up. But if he got up, that means I can get up too. I 
God not only in this world but I can get up out of the grave and that's why we celebrate today we celebrate the fact that we know we are gonna see mother Glenn again look at somebody else and tell them thank God for the resurrection I heard Jesus say if you believe on me as the scripture has said y'all done got quiet here he said out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water and if you believe on the Lord today I come to tell you there's something coming that the devil cannot stop he can't stop you from moving higher when the Lord shall call our name and as I get ready to take my seat we look amen at judgment we look at the fact that God gives us space to repent we look at the fact that while we're in this world this is our opportunity now to make sure that we exercise faith in God you've got some folk all about being popular you've got folk all about being raw y'all done got quiet here but you know what my concern is my concern is that I want to be right with God it doesn't matter if everybody goes the other way I just want to be right with God cause the Bible declares that the downward road is crowded with unbelieving souls ah, but I want to be right with God if folk don't like me that's their problem but I want to be right with God if people don't appreciate your salvation that's all right just be right with God and the Bible says in the book of Revelation he said and the books were open and so there are other books that you've got to consider when you look in the book of Matthew he says man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God what are you saying brother Herman the Bible is going to be open you've got to live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God the stuff you like the stuff you don't like the stuff that make you shout the stuff that make you mad you've got to live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God and not only that sons and daughters but there's the record of your life's work because the word of God declares that every man must give an account of the deeds that are done in his body did you know Ecclesiastes declares ah, that go ahead and do everything that brings you pleasure he said but you've got to understand that for everything you do God's going to call it in the judgment you know what that means that means you've got to be careful about the life that you live you got to be careful about how you treat people you can't treat folk bad just because you got a desk in the middle of the floor you can't talk to people crazy and think that God's going to bless your life you've got to know that God is going to call it in and that's why I tell people be careful how you handle a child of God because God's going to get you for treating us the wrong way I wish you'd lean on somebody and tell a neighbor be careful how you deal with me because for every lie they tell on me God's going to call that stuff in every time they try to get you fired off your job God's going to call it in every time they oh God y'all ain't saying nothing here every time they did your wrong God said I'm going to bring judgment upon every evil work so we got the Bible we got the record of our life's work and then there's the Lamb's book of life and the Bible declares that those that are written in the Lamb's book of life those are those that are going to that place of peace and safety can I tell you sons and daughters we gotta go ahead and start rejoicing now cause we are the children of God and as the children of God we put our trust in the Lord and they that believe on me those that trust in me shall never die
goodbye. I, I wish you'd look at somebody I, and tell them neighbor goodbye. I, it's never goodbye. I, I heard Jesus uh, say she's just asleep. Uh, but then Paul said, uh, what about those that are asleep? Uh, how is this going to happen? Uh, I heard, uh, I heard, uh, I heard Paul say, uh, it's a mystery. Uh, I show you a mystery. Uh, we shall not all sleep, uh, but we shall all be changed uh, in a moment. Uh, in the twinkling of an eye. Could I talk to somebody here? He said, for the trump of God shall sound, and the dead in Christ are going to rise first, and then we that are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. Look at somebody and tell them, neighbor, Make sure uh, that your name is in the book uh, while we're living all of this time, uh, trying to stay here. Uh, we've got to remember uh, that it's appointed unto men uh, once to die. Uh, and after this, the judgment, uh, you're going to die. Uh, you're going to die. Uh, you, you, you and you. Uh, and you're going to die. Uh, and I'm going to die. Uh, we just got to make sure uh, that when the Lord calls our name, uh, that we're ready. Uh, is there anybody here uh, ready uh, to go back with Jesus uh, when he calls our name? Uh, it may not be too long now, uh, and we're going to see the king. Uh, I got to leave it. Uh, good evening, y'all. Uh, but I stopped by to tell you, uh, you got to hang in there. Uh, Sandra, uh, Carolyn and Phyllis, uh, the black eyed peas, uh, hang in there. Uh, family, uh, hang in there. Uh, Uncle Clarence, uh, be encouraged. Uh, ain't Cleanne Lou, uh, and ain't Ann be encouraged. Uh, there's coming a day uh, when all God's children uh, shall get together. Uh, and what a time that's going to be. Uh, Get out of here. Good evening, family. But I stopped by to tell you, you've got to make sure that your name is in the book. Because if your name is in that book, you'll be like Job was. Job said, I'm going to a place where the wicked shall cease from troubling and the weary shall be at rest. Good evening, family. Leave, but I'm reminded in the book of Acts, I believe it's around the 20th verse. The Bible said, Paul got ready to leave, and their hearts were heavy because they knew they wouldn't see Paul again. They fell on his neck and kissed him and said, Paul, saying hard, saying goodbye is hard to do. I'm standing here today and I'm saying goodbye. It's hard to say, so I won't say goodbye. I'll just say farewell, because farewell is a term of travelers. It means take a journey and journey well. But one of these old days, we're going to see you again. That's why every day that I'm living, I'm making sure that my name is in the book. That's the reason I take stuff off of people that I don't have to take. Because I'm making sure that my name is in the book. That's why I pray for folk that despitefully use me. I'm just trying to get to heaven. That's the reason why I do good. The folk that are trying to tear me down. I'm trying to get to heaven. Look at somebody and tell them, neighbor, make sure that your name is in that book. Because if it's not in the book, he said everybody that wasn't found in the book is going to be cast into the lake of fire. But I wish I could get some radical praises to turn around and tell about three people. Tell them, let the devil go to hell by himself. But I, I'm going to trust in God until I die. I got to leave you.
you. <laughs> Good evening, church. I stopped by to tell you that you can make it. You can hang in there. Be encouraged. And when you feel like you can't, I come to tell you, yes, you can. Her life is over. But you still got life to live. You got to pick yourself up. And we got to go on. Moses, my servant is dead. But get up and cross this Jordan. There's a promised land ahead of you. And don't tell me that you can't. And you know what I found out? That this life is hard. That the road is rough. Oh God, that is. And the going gets tough. And the hills are hard to climb. But I started out a long time ago. There's no doubt in my mind that I decided to make Jesus my choice. Look at somebody and tell a neighbor, Jesus is still my choice. On my good days, it's Jesus. On my bad days, he's still my choice. When I'm sick in my body, it's Jesus. When I feel well, he's still my choice. When I got money, it's Jesus. When I ain't got a dime, he's still my choice. When folk love me, it's Jesus. If they hate my guts, he's still my choice. And as long as I got Jesus, everything is going to be all right. I got to leave y'all. But before I leave you, can I tell you, it's going to be all right. Family, we're going to be fine. Church, you're going to be fine. Pastor Rush, you're going to be fine. Because he gave it power to the faint and to them that have no might. He increased its strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with the wings of eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Look at somebody and tell them, neighbor, the reason why I'm shouting today is because of my name is in the book. I ain't got a million dollars. Didn't get a raise on my job. But when I woke up this morning, I didn't have no doubt that my name was in the book. I heard Jesus say in Luke 10, 17 through 20, when they came back rejoicing and saying, Lord, even the devils was subject unto us. I heard Jesus say, don't shout because devils were subject to you. Don't shout over a new house. Don't just shout over more money. He said, but if you're going to shout, shout because your name is written in heaven. And I wish I had about 32,000 923 of you to throw your head back and give God the best praise you can give him right now. Ah, yes, sir. Make sure your name is in that book. Jesus is coming. Somebody clap your hands and praise him. My heart is broken. Sometimes I feel like my mind is fractured. But I can still rejoice because my name is in the book. 
We heard it earlier. Some people are going to say to him in that day, Lord, look at everything that I did for you. I preached, I cast out devils. I prophesied, but you know what Jesus says to them? I never knew you. He didn't say they didn't do it. He just said, I'm not, I didn't hire you. I know who you were working for. You didn't get hired first. So that means there are a lot of people that are just guessing that their name is in that book. They won't know until they get there, some of them. They will say, Lord, look again. Look, it's got to be there somewhere. But you know what he said? Now, I could deal with it if he said, I forgot you. Or your face looked familiar. But for him to say, I never knew you, what were we doing all that time? All that running and shouting, we do, what were we doing all of that time? For him to look at us and say, I don't even know who you are. So what we've got to do, like the old folks used to say, while the blood is running warm in our veins, we got to make sure that our name is in that book. Oh, you can sign the church roll, and you ought to, because everybody needs a good church roll. But more than having your name on the church roll, we got to make sure that our name is in that book. And maybe today there's somebody whose name is not in that book. The good thing is, what I love about heaven is that God's not trying to hide heaven from us. Jesus still stands with his arms wide open and says, whosoever will, that means anybody. You know, sometimes people put stipulations and they feel like you've done so much worse than other people. You know, all they did is lie, you know, and they feel like you don't merit salvation because you did worse than lie. But can I tell you, even if we look at some things and declare that it's not as bad, it's still just as sinful. And the wages of sin is still death. But you know what Jesus says? He said, I'll give you rivers of living water. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. When I would sit with Aunt Glenn, couldn't talk to her too long before she started praising and thanking God. She just thought, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Herman, I just thank him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. She had him on her mind. And to hear that Uncle Clarence just went in and talked and she just settled in and just a good time to go home, I guess. And ain't nothing wrong with that. After you done work 97 years, you're going to want to go home too. Some of us work eight hours in trying to sneak out early. But when you worked all day. Sometimes all you want to do is just go home. And she went home. But we've been left here. What are we going to do with all of this experience, all of this knowledge, all of this example? What are we going to do with all of this? Can I tell you, life is not an opportunity to get rich. Life is an opportunity to get ready. Because we're going to be on the other side a whole lot longer than we're going to be over here. 97 years is just a drop in the bucket to eternity. And you've got some people that are putting all their eggs into this life. But you're going to be over there a whole lot longer than you're going to be over here. So why is this our focus? Why is this all we consider? I've preached funerals for babies that didn't live a whole week. Then I preach services for people as old as 104. Probably preached every age in between. And 
it. All of these funerals, all of these processions, and all of this stuff, you still got people acting clueless like they don't know that death is batting a thousand. And all we're focused on is getting more money and getting more friends and becoming more popular. Just want more likes. Jesus talked about a man that had much goods laid up for many years, he said. He said, say to my soul, take that ease, eat, drink, and be merry. You've got a whole lot, but you're good for a lot of years. But you know what God said to that man? God said, you're a fool. Not because it's wrong to have stuff, but because he never even considered the possibility that while you're planning for many years, you may not even make it. What happens if you don't see retirement? All that money we stack it up. What happens if we don't even get to that point? Ah, we got well-kept bodies, but neglected souls. In the gym, you got folk vegans and bless their hearts and vegetarians and doing all of that for the body. Go to the beauty shop, get our hair done. Go to the salon, get our feet done, our hands done. Botox and all of this. All this stuff we do for the body. But what are we doing to make sure that our name is in the book? Maybe there's somebody here that don't know him in the pardon of your sin. I'll just, would you bow your heads? Father, I thank you today for this wonderful time that you've given us to share in fellowship. I thank you that this, this is the last gift that Sister Glenn is going to give somebody an opportunity to know you in a saving way. I pray today that if there is among us in this sanctuary a heart that's lifted to you, Make them your own. Cleanse them. Purify that heart and seal them to the day of redemption. Let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on them even now. And we thank you for it. In the name of Jesus the Christ we pray. Somebody say amen. <clears throat> There's a land that is fairer than day. And by faith, I can see it afar. Where the Father waits over the way to prepare me a dwelling place there. In that sweet by and by, we shall meet on, on that beautiful shore. In that sweet, sweet by and by. We shall meet on that beauty for And the church said, this time, for those, now we're going to do this a little different. Um, we're going to have a, a, an immediate repast for the family. And um, so what we're going to do is we're going to march 
like to the main lobby. And when we leave the main lobby, the immediate family, not people who want to join the family today, <laughs> we're going to have a repass in what we call the restaurant. That means after the casket has been loaded into the hearse, the family will take a route around that hallway into the restaurant. We'll have exactly 20 minutes. Amen. If you're vegan, five minutes. <laughs> You'll have about 20 minutes to sit, eat, and, and that's because the processional will be going out of town to Turl. So we want to be mindful of the time for Evergreen to do what they need to do. So we'll move around, go into the restaurant, which will be out and around, and then load up and then leave instead of going to Turo, staying there, you know, for hours and coming back. We'll do it that way. Any of you have any objections? If you have any objections, there's a Cane's Chicken straight down Wheatland and a McDonald's right here on Cockrell Hill. They'll be glad to accommodate you. This has been an awesome, wonderful service. Can we just thank God for Pastor Murray? Thank you, sir. For all of our ministers, this has been a great, now I don't know how this sounds to some people, this has been a great funeral. Thank you, musicians. Thank you, all of you. When I say great, this has been some, another reason to say to somebody, come back to church. Go to church somewhere tomorrow. Well, I know Jesus, I know, and you know your cell phone too. But it can just go so long without a charge. Even, even if you have an Android, you need power. I don't want to get into that because I don't advertise anybody. But we, we can't treat our lives like a cell phone that doesn't need a charge. And I know all the talk now in the world is you don't need church, you don't need church. That's called deception, y'all. The first thing that Satan wants to do is make you think the power is weak in the church. There is no power shortage in the church. Come, go, please, get charged back in. All right. Okay, thank you so very much. First thing you got for your cell phone, the first thing you got, if you had any value in that phone, was a cover. That's all I want to say. Father, we thank you. As we leave this place, we never leave your presence. And we thank you for this great blue truck that has pushed so many people back so they could take off. And now, God, she got her wings, and now she's gone. We thank you for the model that she has set forth in our lives. In Jesus' name, let everybody say amen. amen. All right. Talk about how wonderful today was whenever you go and talk anything about today. We're going to have our ministers to follow. We're going to follow our processional out the center here. And then after we have placed inside the hearse, we'll walk around to the restaurant.